We have some fast solar wind, a side-swiping solar storm, and some big flares to ring in the new year. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is remaining a bit on the moderate side. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, you can see lots of coronal holes both in the south and in the north. The ones on the west limb, they've been sending us some fast solar wind, and if, along with a few kind of mini solar storm launches, we've actually been getting a little bit of aurora over the holiday weekend, which has been really nice, but it hasn't come down to uh, mid-latitudes for very long. However, with this other coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the west, West limb and into the Earth strike zone here, about right, right about the end of the, the year, we should get yet another chance for some strong, fast solar wind, and possibly that could give us some more aurora that'll dip down into mid latitudes. On top of that, we do have multiple big regions that are giving us a big flare activity. The big player that we're watching right now, this is region 3176, and it is just beginning to wake up. As of the 27th, it's fired three big solar flares. So we're definitely getting some radio blackouts and those are going to continue and we have a long duration to watch this region rotate across the sun's uh, disk and we could conceivably get some solar storms from it. So we're going to be paying attention to that as well. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, just be aware, we do have radio blackouts on the menu this week. Now as we take a look at our far-sighted sun, this is stereo A and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see that big coronal hole that's kind of rotating to center disk in stereo view. That's the one that's going to be giving us some fast solar wind right around the end of the year. Now also if you look at the east limb, especially in the south, on the 24th, late in the 24th, you see a big slow eruption. That's a beautiful eruption that is not earth directed, but it does reveal that there's a an active region in that in that area that is going to be a solar storm player and possibly another big flare player. So we're going to keep our eyes on that as it continues to rotate into earth view. So aurora photographers, man, we have option a little bit of, of chances for aurora here. Nothing super earth directed as of yet other than some fast solar wind, but it's going to keep us on our toes. And you emergency responders and GPS users, well, we've got a lot of activity as well. And so big uh, radio blackouts are on the menu. So we're going to have to stay vigilant. And now for your Leo Mio Geo Orbit Outlook. As we take a look at our near-Earth space environment, we're really going to be focusing on the MEO and GEO environments because we've had so much fast solar wind over this past week and we plan to get some more in through the new year. And that really causes the particle environments in those orbits to really begin to ramp up. In fact, back on the 22nd and 23rd, that's when you start seeing this uh, the red beginning to light up in the MEO regime. This is basically due to the low energy particle environment now, these are the particles that can charge up the outside of spacecraft and can cause electrical upsets and discharges on the surface of the spacecraft. These particles cause issues mainly in the post-midnight to pre-dawn sector, but you can see as we continue to, to move in through the 25th, pretty much everything lights up red, and that is because the high-energy particles are also becoming a, a problem. Their flux has become very high, and these particles cause issues mainly on the post-noon to pre-dusk sector, so everything is an issue right around the 25th for satellite operators, especially in geo orbits. Now, luckily, these particles, all of them basically get flushed right around the 26th. You can see things kind of cool down just a little bit. But now, sadly, things are beginning to ramp up again. We're beginning to get those low energy particles once again getting to high flux levels. So surface charging is an issue for uh, especially satellite operators in MEO and GEO. And we're going to start seeing the rise of those high energy particles as well. So that's going to be a problem in the post noon to pre uh, dusk sector as well over the next few days. But if we get a solar storm that sideswipes us and that will cause another flush of these particles right around the 28th. So we might be able to kind of clear the way to build those particles up again and give satellite operators a break. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, and by the 31st, the moon will be about 65% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora, you're going to have this bright companion, so you're going to have to check your local rise and set times. 
Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, man, do we have a lot of fast solar wind in the forecast this week. Not only are we kind of calming down from some fast solar wind, but we have yet another coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth's strike zone and sending us some fast solar wind near the end of the year. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active to even minor storm conditions with up to about a 35 to 40 percent chance of major storm conditions. Now remember, we also have that side swiping solar storm right around the 28th or so, and that could enhance uh, activity a bit more. So Aurora photographers, you're at high latitudes, you should get some gorgeous views over to really possibly through the end of the year before things begin to calm down. Now, mid latitudes, it's not quite so strong. We're expecting unsettled to possibly active conditions, but we do have up to about a 10 to 15% chance of minor storm levels. Now, this won't last very long if we get up to storm levels. So Aurora is gonna be a lot more sporadic down at mid latitudes, but if you're dedicated, it might be worth the chase. Uh, especially because it's the holidays. I mean, it's a wonderful time to do it near the end of the year like this to celebrate the new year. But remember, the moon is going to be a bit on the bright side, so it could be a little bit of an issue. But luckily, we do have lots of chances in store. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of active regions on the Earth-facing disk and some that have big flare potential. So this is the reason why everything is in the yellow. NOAA's giving us about a 55% chance of M-class flares over the next couple days, including about a 15% chance of X-class flares. The reason for this is mainly regions 3169 and 3176. Now region 3169 is going to be rotating to the sun's far side here over the next day or two, so things could calm down pretty quickly after this, but we are expecting uh, a high chance of radio blackout. So GPS users, if you're on Earth's day side or if you're anywhere near dawn and dusk, just stay vigilant because blackouts are on the menu. Luckily, solar flux is staying in the mid 100s. We've got about 140 right now and it looks like things are gonna continue to stay that way. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, despite the fact that you're gonna have a little noise on the bands and you do have to worry about radio blackouts, at least for the uh, reasonable foreseeable future, we're going to have some good radio propagation on Earth's day side. Now, taking a look at the radiation storms, we're at the normal levels right now, but you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew, just be aware we do have about a 5% chance of a radiation storm at S1 level over the next few days until region 3169 rotates behind the sun's west limb, so just stay vigilant. So the space weather this week continues to keep us entertained. We have a lot of fast solar wind in the forecast this week. So aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, you should be in for a decent show, possibly some sustained aurora clear through the end of the year. Now, aurora photographers, if you're at mid latitudes, it might be a little bit tougher for you. We are expecting a few enhancements here and there, but only if you're dedicated should you chase because these storms aren't really all that strong and it may not bring the aurora that far south, but definitely take a camera and take long exposures because those cameras can see a lot more than your eyes can. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, we do have a lot of active regions on the Earth-facing disk, and this is keeping that solar flux well into the triple digits, which means good radio propagation on Earth's day side. But we do have some radio blackouts to contend with because we do have some big flare players, including region 3176, which is going to be with us for probably another, oh, maybe seven to 10 days before it rotates off of the earth facing disk. So just know that radio blackouts are on the menu. And now you GPS users, well, this week isn't the best week for you. We do have some continued solar storming and that can make things tough on Earth's night side anywhere near Aurora. And now that we're getting radio blackouts again, well, that doesn't make things so great on Earth's day side either. So just stay vigilant, uh, especially near dawn and near dusk and anywhere near Aurora. Be sure to calibrate your magnetometers often if you're a UAV or drone flyer, and just stay on your toes. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.